Hey, what's going on everyone? Joe Menza here and uh, lately I've been doing these sketchbook paintings and I thought I'd share with you a few different sketchbooks. This is a Strathmore. You can see here the Strathmore logo. I'm not sure what kind of Strathmore it is. Uh, let's see. I can't see as good as I used to. And it doesn't really say, is it 400? Yeah, Strathmore 400, which is a higher quality. And you can see here some of the, these I've done over the years. Just setting up somewhere. And some of these are older. They go back a ways. And there's still a couple of empty pages in there that I could fool with. This is an older one. And then <clears throat> this one's made by Arteza. And this one has some more recent stuff in there. This is, this is 8x8. It's a little bit bigger, which I like. There's another, another one here. A little waterfall scene. And then this is a... This is a homemade this has got arches paper in there somebody made this on Etsy and for the life of me I can't remember who it was if I do I'll post it but uh, really good job the binding I ripped it because I was trying to stretch it open um, but this one has a lot of I did a lot of pieces in here too just a lot of different some of these again are older and today I thought I'd use, I found this today. This is a Kansan XL, which is fairly interesting. It's got a little perforated edge on there. So I thought I would take and do something on here. And by the way, I thought I'd show you these since Cotman was one of the brands that Ron Ranson always talked about. These are little five mil tubes. And these tubes, uh, most of the colors you'll need are in here except for Payne's gray is not here but you could always take and add blue and black together and uh, there's no light red um, but you could get away with that so most of the colors you will need and you could buy one of these if you find it on sale probably for about $25, $28 maybe depending on the sale that you get and so this would be good to have and then if you can get yourself one or two fan brushes because they're perfect for this. You can use the small hake. But uh, I'm gonna just get a little piece of paper and put it there and you could put the colors on there. And uh, you know, a cup of water and dip your brush in too. And you could do this for under 30, 40, well, maybe about $40 or so I would say. Um, you don't need an easel, this is laying flat on the table. And uh, you can use a paper plate. You can use a palette. It's up to you. So the next thing is brushes. If you're looking to start a uh, sketchbook hobby like this, this would be the next thing. And I like to use fan brushes. Now you can use a, uh, a rigger brush. But the main thing that I'm using in these is just different size fan brushes. But most importantly is that these are stiffer. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but these are very stiff. These are not like the soft, the ultra soft. These are almost like a nylon. Sometimes they call these hog bristle. And there's a very tough material. Now you can use a round brush if you like. This is the small Ron Ransom Hake. And this is goat hair, and you can use this for large washes. You can use this for a lot of things. You can use this for leaves. You can use this for evergreen trees. There's a lot of things you can use it for. But I like using these in the same way that I would use a hake brush because I can use these so many different ways. I can make the pine trees, and I can also make, uh, you know, trees going this way. And I can, I can use this in a variety of different ways. And then the next thing, of course, would be something, you need something very portable um, if you're going to be taking it out. And they do sell, you know, these with the pre-made cakes in them. 
Um, this is a one I've had for a long time. I haven't used in a while. But this has, you can put at least, you can actually take this one out. You can use that slot there. Um, but this is this one's pretty dried out. You can have seven and use this. This is where the little brush went. I can have eight colors in here, actually. And these will work very nicely with the with the fan brush. Just reactivate them with some water. Even this brush here, I can... The wells are wide enough to use this. So this is great to have for uh, uh, taking out any plain air type of thing. And uh, maybe I can pop this out. Let's see. I can pop this out. This is wedged in here pretty good. As you can see, there's like a little thumb hole in the bottom. You can hold it if you wanted to. I believe that's for like this, and then this could actually hook on the side, and you can actually use this for something else, water or something. Um, I had just like left it in here because ultimately this is where it goes when you close the case up. But this is a little Windsor and Newton box, and I took out the cakes and. Uh, I filled it just direct so I could put more paint in there. So that's very simple. This this uses the original colors, which is the... Uh, I use yellow ochre and like a cad yellow, and then there's light red, alizarin crimson, burnt umber, Payne's gray, and an ultramarine blue. And then in here, maybe a bonus color. Um, I like to have a couple different blues. I like Prussian blue, and I like indigo in place of the Payne's Gray, or in addition to if I have a bigger palette, but uh, both of them will get us darker colors without having to, um, without having to mix them just as a convenience. Okay, well here I have my eight and a half by eight and a half Arteza sketchbook. We'll do a nice little little sailing scene here. Now, the first thing, I'll take this, and I'll use this small height brush for my wash. And the brush is a little dirty, but that's okay. Go ahead and put a little, little of this in. We'll work on the sky here. And we'll go ahead and we'll get some, some blue. Let's add a little bit more blue to the tray here. A little bit more blue. And we'll go ahead and get a little... Let's go ahead and get a little... Uh, raw sienna on the brush here. Get a little light in that background of the sky there. And there's quite a bit of water on here as you can see because the hake gets, carries a lot of water. So we'll go ahead and we'll get some blue. And with the blue we can put in some clouds like that. And you could dab it away, you could dab it in. Let's say we want to get a little bit of gray over here, maybe add a little bit of red to that blue. Um, don't want to make it too purple, but um, again, we could put, make it any color combination of clouds that you want. And it's nice to have a little bit of excess on your board here, so you can, you could play around, you can make different shades for your clouds. And again, I'm just dabbing that on there. And if you want to as well, you can take a tissue. And you can even dab away a little bit and create some unique effects, unique cloud effects. You know, don't overdo it. Let's add a little bit of here too. So a little bit of a cloudy, cloudy day for sailing. And then we'll go ahead and we'll make up a little red color, reddish purplish color and put in just some mountain hills back in over here. And that's it for that. Just a quick little, little set of hills there. Next thing we're gonna need is some brown mix that in with that and a little bit of blue yeah that's too much let's go ahead and put a little more 
Let's see what color. This is uh, this is actually Van Dyke Brown. But that's okay. It's, it's pretty close. Just want a little bit of a brown color here. And I wouldn't mind a little bit of a darker brown anyway. So we're going to have an have some mountains coming down. Using the corner of the brush, and I'll come straight down here. Yeah, a little more brown on the brush. Straight across, and now we've got some distant mountains and some mountains over here. And we'll use the, we'll use the, uh, We'll use the uh, fan brush. Let's go ahead and put that in the water jar. We'll go to the fan brush and down here, I'll make some same thing with that same brown color. Mix a little brown, a little bit of blue. And here we'll just have, just very quickly, we'll come back to this, but just to give you an idea, this is gonna be the foreground here. We'll have this coming out. A little bit of darks there, see? So we've got, well, this is where our water is going to be. And for that, we'll come back to the fan brush, or the uh, hake brush. This is where the fun is. Now we'll look at the colors in the sky, take a little bit of blue. And again, and my blue is a little more ultramarine blue in there. I know it looks like it's full, but there's something else in there. I gotta clean that out. So we'll take a little bit of the ultra. And we want to make sure, let's just double check, see? Don't want the brush to be too wet for this because we're just going to take and lightly drag it across. Add a little bit of water. We want it to look nice and sparkly, you see? And we'll come back this way. And just leave that like that. So you have your mountains in the distance, you have your foreground. Before that dries, let's go ahead and scrape in some scrape in some some of that foreground rock. We'll come back and make up a little more of this brown color using the fan brush. We'll just color in some of that. And now you have some mountains here that are more in the foreground. And you can also, if it's a little too dark, because you could do a little bit of lifting. And so you have this spread it out with my fingers a little bit. And we'll come back to the brown down here. Just put a little bit more. Need more water with the with the fan brush. Want to leave a lot of this water going down here, though. A lot of this white down here because it just adds to the unique effect. And then, last but not least, I can take a little bit of uh, white here. There's white, I have white gouache as well. Always good to have a little tube of gouache with you. And we'll use the edge of the brush. Let's put a little in the plate here. Okay. And you could use a uh, you can use a rigger for this. I'm gonna use the edge of my fan brush here because I don't have a rigger with me and we'll put in well let's uh, try that again So 
We have a couple little sailboats in the distance there. There's one and there's one. And we'll put a little, little dash on the bottom there. So a couple little distant sailboats. I can't make that point here. There we go. A little point here. So a couple little distant sailboats against the mountain there. And last but not least, I'll throw in a couple of birds over here. And we'll sign over here somewhere. And there's a nice little sketchbook mountain scene. Easy peasy in less than 10 minutes. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll have more to come. And it's a nice, enjoyable, fun, loose way to paint sketchbook painting. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.